Hey everybody, welcome to the Engadget Podcast for the week of July the 15th. I am joined, uh, as as usual, by Peter Rojas, am I right? Hey. Hello, Peter. And uh, Terrence, it's been a while? It has been. I feel like you don't love me anymore, Brian. No. It's, it's, why been, I, it's been so long. That's why I brought you back to my hotbox room, <laughs> so we could share the... <laughs> The love of uh, tech news. And, uh, oh, an exciting new addition who we haven't had to the show for the while. That is, of course, the Angry Bird. There we go. People. people Which I guess is good if we're going to talk about Nokia. Because uh, of the finish. Uh, psh, psh, sure. <laughs> you got to let me finish, Peter. Sorry. Man, I stole your joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's talk about Nokia, actually, at, at the top of the show. So this was, so we, we, um, we skipped a week because uh, some members of the Engadget staff were, were out gallivanting in the woods in Maine last week, so we didn't get a chance to talk about Nokia. Yeah. I really wish I could have been here for Nokia instead of, you know, out in the woods how, drinking how? in a hot tub. I'm not I'm, I'm not yeah. going to lie. That clearly sounded like the better time to me. Do you want to... Well, they, they actually... I'll, I will say this for the Nokia event. They had um, probably the, the best food that I've had in an event. They had some... Is it finished food? They, no, it was just some, like, quality you would have liked it. They had some nice vegan fare there oh, and some well, good juices. That, Got a nice I'm green all juice. over that. Yeah. Uh, well, that's uh, actually unusual for a press event. Uh, that, that's what I'm saying. So. I mean, like, when, when I say good, I mean, I mean not only, not only like, actual high in quality, but, you know, um, not totally restrictive in terms of, yeah. you know, dietary restrictions. Then it's early in the morning. No, it was, like, 11 a.m. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was there. Uh, it was 11 a.m., and we were there um, at least till 5 p.m., and it was, it was kind of yeah, a, so a it's gauntlet. Yeah, a big thing. Um, you know, we spoke to a few executives while we were out there and got to play around with some of the apps. Um, you know, obviously had hands on with the phone, um, uh, with the camera grip, which, which, uh, Joe had a chance to play around I'm with. I'm fascinated by the camera grip. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a, a smartphone with that accessory before. It, it's a, it's an access. I mean, you know, the, the, the Nokia, the Nokia 1020 is, let's be honest, it's, it's kind of more camera than phone at this point anyway. I mean, that's yeah. really Nokia's selling point. I mean, the, you know, they're at a, they're like any other hardware company right now where they're trying to, to set their heart, their, their hardware apart from, from other companies. In spite of the fact that I, I, I guess they're already kind of set apart from a, a software perspective and that there aren't a lot of, Companies rocking Windows Phone at the moment. Yeah, they're they're one of the few, and definitely the most uh, passionate supporter, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, and, and they've uh, yeah they certainly have have the most to uh, to win or lose um, as far as the success of, uh, of Windows Phone yeah, goes. Yeah, they bet the house. Yeah, on Windows Phone. They mortgaged the house. They <laughs> they did, and you know, I mean, let's be honest, they had to do something drastic. Yeah, burning well, platform, as Stephen <laughs> Elop famously called it. Well, and I think that um, it's funny how I think that if anyone wishes that they had chosen Android, now obviously Google would have been happy, but I think Google would especially want to have a, a counterweight to Samsung right now. Yeah, in the, the form of Nokia. Since, yeah, I mean HTC, I think is doing a, a decent job. They're at least from a hardware perspective. Yeah, I just think in terms of sales, they haven't yeah. uh, uh, quite. Um, Stop the Samsung juggernaut, and, and I, I'm sure Google wants somebody else. I mean, since it doesn't even seem like Motorola is going to be able to to play that role. Yeah, well, when you're buying into Nokia, you're buying into the smart smartphone. Well, I guess it's probably more fair to say the phone manufacturer with you know the biggest market share out there. So mm. you've, you've got you've already got maybe not in the U.S. but in other countries, you've already got a pretty um pretty built in selection of uh, of Nokia uh, uh, fans out there. Um, but but right now. You know they, they've they've not only bet the house on Windows Phone, but have completely bet the house that uh, that having a really nice camera is going to be enough to set this apart from other devices. I mean, they've certainly they've invested a lot from a from a hardware standpoint and are fully capable of making a really nice, beautiful phone. There's no question about that. Um, but this was a you know this was a conversation that I that that I had with Steve, Stephen Elop after the event, which was, um, you know, do you feel like all of the other innovation of of your company on these handsets has kind of taken a backseat to developing a really nice camera? You know, well, and what did he say? Well, he 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 basically. Well, a you know it's it's important to know that Stephen Elop is the the master of the yeah the CEO the, 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 the non answer. Yeah, I the non answer. Nobody, nobody can avoid answering a question quite like that. Man. Oh yeah, he's fa- he's fantastic at it. Like to back up a second, actually, I think the highlight of the event for me was. Um, I, were you were you following along live? You oh yeah, no, no, I was, I was I was yeah, yeah. You were running things from home. At from, home. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was a Q and A at at the end in which um, a really irate member of the audience stood up and said listen i love nokia you make really great devices how can you justify partnering with a carrier as terrible as at&t 
Uh, I thought was, he was going to get up and demand symbian on this thing. No, no, no. It was definitely an American who asked the question. Yeah, okay. So there was no investment in symbian. But uh, his, his answer to it was basically... Um, she was saying, I guess, from a promotional standpoint, AT and T hasn't done a very good job selling mm-hmm. these devices, and and Stephen Elop got up and said, "Hey, listen, that's on us. Like, if there if there has not been good promotion of Nokia handsets, that lies entirely on Nokia." Yeah, Would- I mean, I think the thing people don't understand is that um, manufacturers don't necessarily want to do carrier exclusives, but yeah. when you don't have a lot of leverage, it's what you get stuck with, um, and, and this is uh, we've seen that over and over again. Yeah. But it was only when. Um, say, for example, like with the Galaxy S3 launching on all four carriers at the same time, um, major carriers, it was uh, it was an indication that Samsung had had enough clout in the market to be able to do something like that. And before, they might not have had that. I mean, do, 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 are we moving towards a place where um, carrier exclu- exclusivity is going to more and more become a thing of the past, do you think? Well, and I guess we'll talk about, I mean, if the subsidy model changes, then yeah. it certainly becomes more complicated to do the, um, the carrier exclusives. But I think that... Um, that the carriers, especially here in the U.S., still hold a lot of the cards, and they're still able to do a lot of the, um, you know, the marketing and and sales with, um, you know, with consumers that, that the manufacturers rely on if they actually want to sell a lot of these things. And so, um, if you know, I, I could, you know, you could see like a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a chicken, but you, it's a game of chicken. But you could see AT and T yeah. saying with say the ten twenty, like, well, we're not going to carry it at all unless we get it exclusively, and then. You know, and we're not, and then you're not necessarily going to get a better deal from Verizon, which has even more clout in the market than than AT and T. Yeah, I, I don't think ultimately that that Nokia has a ton to lose from from a model like that. I mean, especially when they're partnering to start with AT and T, who is a massively huge carrier, and those phones are eventually going to trickle down onto the other carriers anyway, yeah. right? It's not like they're partnering with Metro PC. Yes, yeah, exactly. or <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> But I guess the thing I wonder is whether is how much um, the 1020 is for them is meant to be kind of a halo device um, mm. that is like, not that they expect to sell millions and millions of them. I'm sure they would love to, but that more it's about um, creating a halo effect for their other devices. Because I mean, you played with it. I mean, it's not necessarily most, I don't, I don't get the sense that most people are opting for a phone quite this large. Um, I mean, it's not enormous, but yeah. it's not, um, I mean, it's not as slim as some of the other phones we've seen. And uh, that maybe it's just about creating a perception in the in the market about Nokia having great imaging devices by having a, a, a top of class sure. device that not many people buy, but at least you know surrounds the rest of the brand. Yeah, I, that, that's certainly part of it. Another another fact, quite frankly, is just is getting out there and creating this technology that's a, a, eventually going to trickle down into the rest of the devices. Yeah. Um, a, a question relating to the 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 question earlier, a question that um, that Richard asked uh elop was <clears throat> whether or not he was afraid of you know they, they've just come out with um you know like the, the, the 920 like they, they've got a, a lot of recent handsets and were they afraid of cannibalizing those with coming out by coming out with this new flagship device um and, and essentially you know what, what what he was saying is it's this constant evolution you know we don't think of it in, in terms of you know in Samsung terms of let's like put out as many phones as possible to kind of get every single different price point and size point imaginable. We think of it in let's just constantly make these things better. So when I yeah. asked him if everything was taking a back seat to them making, you know, the best camera imaginable, he said, well, you know, think about it this way. Like with every single phone that's come out, we've been iterating on it a little bit and making yeah. things a little bit better. And that means ultimately whatever the latest, greatest phone is, is it, it's going to give you users the latest and greatest experience. Yeah. Though, I mean, the windows phone, I don't think there's a 1080p windows phone out yet. Yeah. I mean, there's still a little bit of a, it seems like spec, just purely on the specs, uh, setting aside this camera um, sensor, um, that Windows phones have lagged behind Android devices. Sure, sure. Uh, and um, and I think that that is one of those challenges that even as you know Nokia and other Windows phone manufacturers iterate and improve their devices, yeah. it's still if you're a half generation behind or whatever um, against you know the dominant you know, the dominant phones from, that are on Android, it still creates a little bit of a, a, a disparity in the marketplace for people. I think the argument that Nokia would make, and probably the same argument that, that Apple always made, was though, that consumers don't care about specs. They don't care what the speed of the processor is inside as long as it moves quickly. I, I, I mean, w- they might more now that there's so much choice out there. I mean, no, that's, that's true. You know, you know what it is? I think that consumers don't always care about specs, except sometimes that... Um, when they have a side by side comparison. Yeah. No, I mean <laughs> yeah. for sure. If it if it um, makes an obvious but, difference in the experience of the device, but I think that's you know they are lagging behind in the specs, but I think the argument they would make is 
with those lower specs, we're able to deliver the same experience. Whether or not that's actually true is an arguable yeah. uh, point. But. No, I think that, I mean, I, I, I agree with that. I, I mean, it, it's just, it, it seems like there's sort of like this confluence of factors that have, you know, led to Windows Phone not really, I mean, it's growing, but it's not growing as quickly as it would need to, to yeah. be considered a truly third option in the smartphone market. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's got two two big strikes against it when it comes to, again, staying, staying at, on the top spec-wise. One is that obviously... Um, no major manufacturer aside from Nokia really has a vested interest in making that their top of the line device. Yeah. And the other is that, you know, I, Microsoft has in, in a sense kind of crippled these devices from the beginning and, in, in, in offering up a relatively limited amount of things that you can do from a hardware perspective. Yeah. Well, well, that's yeah. changed with the it, yeah, latest version. It's versions. changed, certainly, but it, but I think it got them off to a slow start. No, for sure it did. The, the, yeah. That first batch of you know, Windows Phone 7 devices were you know probably even more than a generation behind by the end of the yeah. line. Um, they were very much restricted. But that's that sort of opened up the thing is, though, that, as you said, they don't have any manufacturers invested in it besides Nokia who are helping push that forward. Samsung yeah. builds them, but it's you know one of three operating systems that they build smartphone operating systems in theory that they build phones with i mean they just don't care clearly yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering um and this is something that kind of came out uh, a because there's all been all these carrier events and b um you know some something that nokia was certainly talking about a lot at this event they had at&t present obviously um ralph de la vega got on stage and they you know they also had this little when you walked into this big back room with all these hands on, there were all these different sort of scenarios with the device. You know, there's like a little camera space, a little um, speaker space. And then there was, there was an AT&T kiosk set up in there. Like yeah. they, they basically gave you an example of what it was going to look like in AT&T stores to, to show you that, you know, this is how they're going to differentiate themselves. And, and, and the, the, the question that I'm getting at, I'm wondering ultimately when we're talking about people comparison, comparing specs side by side is how much purchasing is actually going on in these stores. How much, you know, what percentage of people buying smartphones is somebody, somebody's contract being up, walking into an AT&T or Verizon or whatever store and looking at all the phones side by side. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I mean, I think this is one of the challenges for, for, you know, the smartphone, for anybody that wants to challenge Android and iOS is that um, people are increasingly, I don't, you know, there's a lot of, there are, obviously ecosystem is lock-in is a, is, is a factor. I also think that um, people are um, feeling less compelled to upgrade the phones that they have um, so that, you know, one of the, I think one of the challenges HC, you know, has had with the one is that it is not that it's not a great phone. It's that people n- or I've reached a point where they're like, well, my phone's pretty good hmm. and I don't feel like I have to like rush out and upgrade early or it, go out of my way you know, yeah. to get a new phone right now. It bring, that brings up an interesting... Which is a big change from a couple of years ago, yeah. I think. Yeah, well, that brings up an interesting question, which is in the way that, you know, people are obviously financially locked into carriers, you know, physically locked into carriers. Are, do people... Are people like, um, you know, it's uh, kind of like, are people locked into hardware in the same way? Are you know, or 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 you know, the same way that there would be operating systems? You know, again, it's it's so hard to make that jump if you've had an iPhone forever to go over to Android. But you know, if you had a Galaxy S three, are you just are you are you gonna probably you're probably upgrade to the Galaxy S four right if you had a decent experience with it? Maybe, but I, I also you know, a lot of people feel like well, the S four is not a big enough bump up sure but, but if your contract's up and it's time to you, upgrade you anyway you stay, you stay with the manufacturer yeah that's what i'm wondering know, i'm not sure i think people tend to stay with an ecosystem so that's yeah been good for android and less about um uh being manufacturer specific but um i mean this is uh, i mean, think with respect to windows phone i think that the lack of that network effect causes a lot of problems for you know it's causing a lot of problems for them i think that um like i said not not necessarily as many people are like we've gotten to a point where more than fifty percent of, of of people um, who own a phone in the U.S. own a smartphone, and so the pool of people that are buying their first smartphone is shrinking. Yeah, and um, and not everyone's ever going to buy a smartphone. <laughs> um, maybe eventually they'll only be able to buy a smartphone, and then they won't be there won't be that issue. But I think that um, a lot of the people who would feel compelled who are, you know, making that first purchase, the stuff that they, you know, see out there with their friends is either Android or it's iOS and they mm-hmm. don't see a lot of windows phones. So when they go into a store, um, even if they're not committed to buying anything in particular, there is a familiarity with iOS and Android that that's going to make them really comfortable. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and and you know, as good of an operating system as as Windows is, it, you've got to wonder if there's anything that compelling to to make people completely abandon the system if they've been locked into yeah. this. Long. Well, I mean, this is right. This is the BlackBerry problem. <laughs> yeah, where there there isn't really very much. I I don't see anything from BlackBerry that would compel anyone to leave an Android or iPhone. Yeah, I, I think I saw my first um, Q10 in the wild. Uh, in, wow, uh, yeah. I've never seen a Q10. I've never yeah. seen a single new BlackBerry. Yeah. I saw BlackBerry a Z10 once. That was on the plane on the way to expand. That was the only BlackBerry yeah. 10 device I've seen in the wild. Uh, I saw a Q10 on the tram at SeaTac, uh, actually. But well, that's a yeah. yeah. That's well, a trade show. It's practically not the wild. No, no, uh, uh, Seattle Tacoma Airport. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, I thought uh, I thought you meant not that. C- C- yeah, SeaTac. Yeah, yeah. Okay. SeaTac. C- C- you know, it is a it is a tech town. However, yeah. um, so 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 this is a this is a kind of a big a big grandiose question that I would I would put forth to you to you gentlemen. You know if. From a hardware standpoint, what's the next what's the next battleground? I mean, Nokia clearly thinks that it's the camera that's going to win people over. Um, if you're going to set yourself apart from something uh, on something other than software, what, what's the next big thing? Is it is it is battery life? Well, is it rugged? Is it building the next you know super rugged phone that people could drop in the toilet? Google and Motorola clearly think that it's battery life, and I mean, I think there's definitely a market there for sure. sure. Um, you know. Having played with the uh, Droid Razor Max, there's not I, nothing compares to having a battery that yeah. actually lasts all day, which is amazing. Yeah. Or two days. Um, it's just not sexy, right? It's and, not a sexy device. Yeah. If, and, and nor is nor is nor is battery life as a selling point. No, it's not a sexy, uh, you know, spec for sure. Yeah. Um, honestly, I don't know what the next big thing is going to be. I think you know, Nokia might be onto something with the camera. But Nokia has been selling their phones based around the quality of their camera, you know, since before Symbian, really. Yeah, since and and, the, and this is not the first forty-one yeah. megapixel cam- camera phone they've offered either. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. I mean, I, 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 God, I don't, I don't want to sound like a luddite here, but I'm wondering if for the average consumer, you know, what what a a Galaxy S4 can do or what an iPhone can do in terms of cameras probably good enough for most people right it's probably good enough i think also there's um i think someone brought up in the comments the file size of a, oh yeah uh, well issue, they, they do have a work around that which sure. is which is splitting up in two and creating every time you take a picture also creating a five megapixel version that you can share which yeah, i think is a good I'm just way saying to it's you know yeah um to be able to have i mean but to be able to take like gigantic images that you can't do anything with on a mobile network um, yeah, well, or even just eating up space on your. Sure. Well, that's true. That, that, that that's probably that's actually probably a, a, a better point when it comes down to it because you know, a, a, a again they showed that it's automatically processing two different files at the same time, so you're getting that really large one, and you're getting a five meg one that you can you can send send out in the world. So the processing time is going to take a little bit longer on mm-hmm. that handset than others, and there's also. Um, which is super cool when you see it in person is actually something that I could see coming in handy in real life is not having to worry about exactly how you frame up the image when you, when you take a picture, you just take a picture and you can zoom in, you can zoom out and still have a a high res shot. I I think that's a great feature. I mean, I assume we looked at some of the, were you able to actually get an image file to look like probably not. But um, um, well, I, we wonder, looked at, I took some images. Yeah. yeah but you able, looked at them on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, not able to transfer. Yeah, I'm just it. wondering. Yeah. I'm just wondering about the pixel noise at a 41 megapixel sensor. Um, yeah, I wasn't able to actually transfer any of the really large images, and yeah. I, and I think like honestly, I think probably most real world world usage of this thing is going to be taking that shot and then moving the smaller mm-hmm. file off. But again, I think there's something to be said for that of taking a picture and then framing it afterwards. Because how many times have you been just pulled out your camera and had to take a shot real quickly and realize you didn't get the shot that you yeah. wanted? Well, if I remember correctly, they did demo that and show the blown up one uh, during the event. They showed the Statue of Liberty, and there was quite a bit of pixel noise in the you know sort of cropped image. Yeah, when you uh, that yeah. was ju- that was honestly just a demonstration of just how tight we can get. Yeah, it. and no. you're not going to want to use you're not going to want to take a, a shot of the New York City skyline and zoom into that and have yes. that be your main image. But it is it, it's also. Again, I don't know how much real world usage is going to be of this, but it's really cool to be able to do that—to take a picture and really, really examine the crap out of it. Well, no, and I think that's you know kind of part of the 
the problem with a lot of these phones, and Samsung suffers from this more than anybody else, but I think Nokia does a little bit too, is that they introduce all of these sort of gimmicky new features and they make market it as sort of big selling point. And in reality, nobody uses them. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I know a lot of people who own you know, Galaxy S threes or fours and i've literally never seen any of them answer it by waving their hand in front of it because who wants to do that it seems like a ridiculous thing yeah it, it's almost <laughs> like it's almost like they're disingenuously adding features that they know people won't use because they market well yeah i mean that's certainly not the worst strategy yeah. to try to sell stuff but, i don't th- i don't think that a really nice camera is quite waving your hand in no front of it's not having a nice camera isn't but a lot of the software sort of things that go along with it that they're really playing up, I think, are the equivalent of that. Yeah, I mean, there, there are some really nice things on, on the software, and there's, I think it was called Nokia Pro Cam, or I could be wrong, whatever the, whatever the, the um, software they're using on it. I mean, that's really nice. You can really, I mean, if you are a photographer and for whatever reason are, you know, just have your phone on you, you can adjust the white balance. You can adjust all these other things. That's yeah. really nice. They're... You know they're making an effort to um, <clears throat> to open up the SDK to developers so that you know uh, Path was there. They showed the way that this interacts with Path. You know that all the different camera features that are built in um, from a software perspective translate pretty well. So the uh, Path finally came over to Windows Phone, and this is kind of the flagship device for that. And they've got something yeah. crazy like fifty additional filters based on what mm-hmm. Samsung was offering up. Right. Yeah. So all sorts of fun new things There's that still you can no do. Instagram. This. Those images that, that you take on the device. Uh, so you, I mean, you played with it. Yeah. I mean, what's what was your feeling in terms of like the the size? Um, it's a really because really, it's not like I mean because we've seen like the Galaxy yeah. like the Galaxy um, camera yeah from Samsung which is just like yeah I mean that's a camera yeah I mean that's really just like that's 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 more it seems like more of a proof of concept than anything yeah. else at this point yeah. that look what we 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 can do down the road. Um, yeah, it's a nice. It's a real. It is a really nice phone. I mean, Sam, uh, excuse me. Nokia unquestionably makes really nice phones, right? Those, pretty much any one of those current Lumia devices are really nice things, like and beautiful objects. Those yeah. beautiful unibody objects. Um, the the lens does as you would expect jut out a bit, and that's a little bit problematic when you're trying to lay the thing down. It kind of goes to the side um as they were but as they they were putting it the uh, the back is the new front so i guess maybe you want to lay it on the screen but that seems problematic as well yeah um yeah i mean it's gonna it's it's gonna be thicker it's gonna add something something to your pocket i mean I, honestly there's unless you did it feel like it felt yeah too, it, so big that it didn't feel like too big that you were like i could never use this though no, no, you know, certainly not not more than a the note <laughs> bills in my hand. I mean, it, I didn't I didn't feel overwhelmed. I think that like our threshold for really large phones has probably increased you know, yeah. exponentially over the past couple of years. But sometimes people, it's the thickness that really bothers people rather than the the higher yeah. width. I it it felt really nice. I mean, again, yeah. I, I did not get a chance to carry it around on my person, but it it felt like a, a nice phone. Um, but I, unless you are really really committed to cam the camera there's really no reason to buy this thing over any other yeah. device that's the same i think it's a halo device yeah i think so too i think i think you know if you look at like the 808 for example that was them coming out with this technology and sticking a device and this is kind of the natural progression of making a nicer slimmer phone with that on it and we're going to continue to see these technologies that they're coming out with um trickle down to other phones i mean another another question that came up was um uh, developing countries because obviously Nokia has a, a big presence out there. You know, Symbian is still yeah. a pretty large phone. Feature phones, Nokia still makes uh, probably a killing off of feature phones at this point. I assume. Um, you know, will will the 1020 end up in developing nations? And the answer being probably not. But the technologies that we're developing now probably will at some point. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so we took about half the show talking about that one specific device. I mean, we I, I have Nokia earnings on here. I guess we could talk about these really quickly. Sure, if you want. I uh, guess. Uh, they're not great, but they could be worse. Okay, so those were the Nokia earnings. Uh, no, they moved, they moved a lot of devices. They sold uh, 7.4 million devices. So they're, I mean, certainly from that perspective, heading Except in the right direction. Except for Lumia's. But, yeah. 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 Um, so, so that's good news. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's growing, but it's just not growing at, this tremen- at such a tremendously fast rate that you could... You know, I mean, they have to. Yeah. Um, I mean, they have to be selling a lot more smartphones um, to make up for for yeah. the erosion of their of their earlier business. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is beyond like, oh, make an Android device or two, guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> 
I think their answer would be the developing markets is where they're they're really you know pushing low end you know glorified feature phones and that. I think they've, in many ways, seem to concede the American market to an extent. And it's just like, we're going to get into the Middle East, and we're going to get into Southeast Asia, and if we can establish brand loyalty there, you know, we're going to be able to make our money there down the road. Yeah, down the road. I mean, they, they, they do realize right now that they're going to be operating at a loss until they can really start selling feature phones. Yeah. So I, I don't know financially, I'm sure that they've got a lot of money in the bank, but, you know, how much longer can they carry on kind of waiting for you know sales in china to explode oh i mean that's a perfectly good point but <laughs> well i didn't say they were making the right decisions yeah. i'm just saying that seems to be that seems to be the what, the, what dialogue. the dialogue the dialogue it's, yeah. it's a tough strategy because the, the 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 low end of the market is i mean is being flooded by these uh android cheap chinese android handsets yeah. yep. and um it's going to be very very tough i think one of the other things that's going to be a real challenge for them is that um Sooner or later, I mean, the smartphone market is going to be saturated, and it, the, there's not going to be much growth there. I mean, people will still sell billions of them, but um, for a company like Samsung or Apple or even Microsoft, um, you know, there are other markets that you go into and mm-hmm. you expand into, and you and you see your future growth hopefully come from. Yeah. Uh, but for Nokia, it's there isn't much. I mean, like they did used to sell tires, but. Um, <laughs> But uh, they we're in the rubber business. For yeah, a while, it's yeah. like they they kind of it's the same kind of situation that 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 HTC or or, or BlackBerry is in, which is um, they 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 bet everything on on you know they have one product category yeah. basically, which is phones. They and don't even have a tablet at this point, really. N- Nokia. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they did make netbooks. <laughs> well, they, you know, and they I forgot and, completely about yeah. that. They did, and, and they did have, inter- they, they were one of the first companies with that kind of little internet tablet at, for a while there. Oh, I loved that. that was yeah. the, um, oh, God, I, Camera, I had, it had all I, that weird little QWERTY keyboard yeah. attached to it. There was the, uh, I think it was the 770 or the Yeah, 800. something like that. Or was, I think it was the 770, and then the successor was the 800 or the 880. It was actually yeah. named after this building. Yeah, I know. That's not true. So, yeah, there was the 770. Yeah. Um, and then there was the, I think, the 800 and the 810 or something. I like mean, that. That, that's certainly a case of them being ahead of the curb to their detriment. Yes. Yeah, and they just, they, they, they ended up in a, they kind of went into a dead end, but if they had gotten that right, they would have, um, yeah. they could have done really amazing things. Do you remember when Sony came out with that little, that little device? Um, I'm totally blank on the name, but it was basically like a phone without cellular connectivity. The Milo? Yeah. And everyone was like, why would we need a thing like that? <laughs> why would we need a phone without phone connectivity? Again, like <laughs> they're kind of ahead of the curve on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So let, let's get into, let's get into the carrier stuff a little bit. Um, we were kind of dancing, dancing around that. And, and I, I, I wanted to just head right over to that, that topic, uh, uh, Peter, when you said that people aren't upgrading phones the way they used to. And this, it, this, it, does it seem well, like the, it, the time is not right to get rid of these plans if people aren't upgrading phones anyway? Um, I mean, this actually might be one reason why the carriers are, are introducing this kind of thing is because they're trying to, um, I mean, obviously they want to reduce churn, but I think they're also trying to get people to, um, uh, to upgrade their phones more frequently. So this is, uh, I mean, we can talk about the different ways that the different carriers are trying to do this. Well, yeah, let's, I, I guess we, yeah, we should probably, I don't know, back announce what we were talking about yeah. a little bit. This, the, this, this recent trend, which is now gone, I guess, across all the major carriers, say for Sprint, for Sprint yeah. as much as Sprint is a major carrier, uh, started with T-Mobile, who clearly has spent the last year trying to reinvent itself as, um, the, the, the simple user friendly consumer, facing carrier because let's be honest everybody hates carriers at this point everybody is everybody's totally fed up I, they're, I don't, they're the new oil companies or yeah, banks I they're guess. basically selling cigarettes yeah uh with to a children three-year plan to children speaking of which <laughs> okay. the most important part the question i have yeah. about this t-mobile thing what was with the dolls that's a really oh oh you know what i think it was in retrospect i, I you know it's funny so to, to to back up a second so we got to this event uh, it was Ed, Ed, Edgar and myself, and there was a big stage. And then on the corner of their stage, there was a table with a bunch of um, what's called American Girl dolls. Is that what they're called? Uh, it's something like that. Sure. It does, yeah. doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> they're like really expensive dolls. But the point being, like, kind of out of place. Now that I'm thinking about it in, in, in retrospect, I think those were a jab at AT and T's commercials with the kids at the table. Oh yeah! See, I didn't get that. I didn't. I, like, I, I didn't think I like, about it again. But too inside. Yeah, well, John, John Legere like spent a huge 
chunk of the show making fun of those AT and T commercials. He kept he would show the the little backdrop behind him and and would would jab at him. I mean, there there a lot of it. This this really comes down to his character, which is kind of terrifying. I mean, I I talked to some T Mobile people afterwards, and they're like, yeah, that's pretty much what he's like. You're, they're like, you know, that what he was wearing. He was wearing a magenta T Mobile shirt. He wears that around the and office. That's it. Yeah, no pain. He was Donald. He was he was Donald Duckin for that audience, um, you know. But the, a huge part of his approach has basically been attacking the carriers. I mean, and swearing a whole lot, and swearing a whole lot. And like every time, I don't know if you got this too, Terrence, but when AT and T announced their plan, I got an email from T Mobile, like you know, basically saying their point of it and that's that's what they're doing the whole strategy is let's go as aggressively as we can after the air carriers if they have to <laughs> well yeah I've absolutely got there. yeah absolutely uh well yeah i don't know if i want john legere to necessarily be the face of it he is one of the least charismatic people yeah. well I've, i don't think they're putting him in the commercials so no no i think he thinks he's a, a lot more charismatic than he actually is yeah um okay so jump is essentially a way to kind of get around the the two-year plan so you know a way to upgrade faster and and basically what you're doing is you're you're buying into the ability to eventually buy uh buy phones more quickly so you're paying like ten dollars a month yeah. to get on this plan and ten dollars a month when the time comes you can take your existing phone and and trade it in and they'll waive some fees on top of that so that's assuming way, it, i guess it's in pretty good shape. in pretty good shape yeah. yeah so so that's the way that works and you know and 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 essentially we've seen similar plans from uh, from AT&T and Verizon come out. And my, my question to you guys uh, before the show was, how did this happen? Was it, did, 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 did T-Mobile pull the trigger and then everybody else just felt the need to immediately rush out and offer up their alternative? Probably. Yeah. I mean, obviously, these like plans they, these, they, 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 these plans have been in a holding pattern for a while. It's not like they just came up with the plans on the spot. That's, I don't know, sometimes it feels like it. Yeah. So, so companies do things sometimes, and you just go, yeah, they respond to it. They just... Yeah, but I'm, this, this is a ma- I mean, this is a pretty major thing to roll out, right? This, I mean, this, this, this you, well, you th- definitely got to crunch the numbers on whether this makes sense from a financial standpoint. <sighs> Sometimes I don't know that they do that. Yeah. Um, I mean, Verizon, all they did really was release a press release. I didn't see any like marketing materials or anything like that. And, and they didn't have an event. Way T-Mobile did. Yeah, and it doesn't actually go into effect for quite a while. Yeah. It feels like they might have just said, "Oh, sure, we should do this too," and spit out a press release with like the first name that came out of a brainstorm session and you know that's what we got yeah edge really like our i doesn't edge bring back back me- bad memories well i say i thought it was uh, ironic for a uh, a carrier to to do edge yeah. for a, any kind of uh product that is a, that is a weird choice yeah. but better than one x rtt i guess but. yeah yeah I, I, so i i, I just I don't um, know if anybody got that i don't but. i actually did you get that one X, yeah, one X, yeah. yeah. It's uh, pre edge GSM. That was, that, that, was awesome, like the, huh? that was like the equivalent of edge for um, uh, CDMA yeah. carriers. Um, so AT and T next is a pretty decent name. Uh, twelve monthly payments. So so th- so there are twelve months versus I think it's six months for T Mobile. That's that's as soon as you can you can opt into that. But they're both similar in that you you have to buy into the plan and then do it for a certain number of times. So it's 12 months and then you're entitled for to a, uh, to a brand new device. Um, what are we doing? A uh, month to month. Uh, you, you know, the Verizon breakdown, right? Off the top of your head. Oh, off the top of my head. Uh, I read it on the way into the office this morning. Okay. So only kind of, um, I mean, it was basically the same thing. I think they were doing uh, 12, you paid off over 24 months. Do we have the link available so that I can actually, it's a cost yeah spread out over 24 months yeah um like did you be able to spread it out and then so you it's, can, tw- uh, it's and 20 months trade for in AT&T. after the first six months as long as you paid off at least half yeah. of your phone's total price yeah okay which so, nobody is going to do because if it's a 24 month payoff period you're going to pay the minimum and it'll take you 12 months to get to the halfway point and so nobody's I mean, actually going to turn it in after the six fact months. that we're like having this dialogue. I mean, a it comes down to the fact that the the, eighth, the Verizon one is is new that just that that came down today. But B B I think speaks to something larger. And this was a conversation that I had with T Mobile, which was you know when you're going out of your way to talk about how simple these things are and how much more user friendly they are, but like in a they lot of ways not. they're every bit as complicated. If in some cases probably more complicated. I'd than say the more complicated. Plans. Yeah. So, but well, I mean, the thing is, until <laughs> devices are basically you just buy a device and get service without yeah. these complicated subsidies and things like that. I mean, it is going to be slightly 
convoluted because the carriers have an interest in being convoluted because that's sure. how they make money, right? If you don't completely understand what you're signing up for, you're probably going to end up overpaying for it. Um, and the thing is, I don't think this situation is really going to get better until a good, a high end smartphone costs a lot less than six hundred and fifty dollars yeah. or whatever. When and there's no reason why they should cost that much forever. I mean, there's obviously these rumors that the Moto, the Moto X is going to cost getting into like uh, you know Nexus Four territory, yeah. um, and that that could be something that starts to change, you know, how people behave. If you can buy a phone unsubsidized for three hundred bucks and own it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I think they're also you know betting a lot on that that kind of consumer rebate model, which is ju- just a lot of people are going to buy into this and just eventually for whatever reason not do it. I mean, people, you know, I, I well, wonder what percentage of people are actually going to be upgrading these things as quickly as they can. Yeah, well, I think the good thing about Jump is that if you were already paying for the monthly insurance, um, then it's not necessarily that bad of a deal to bump it up to ten bucks and then be able to upgrade more quickly. Um, I mean, you really have to like. The sense I get is that if you're going to be sort of cavalier about it, you're probably not going to get a good deal. But if you're strategic and think about what phone you buy and when you want to trade it in and yeah. all that stuff, that you can probably get um, a, a, you know something good out of it. But you do have to think about it. Yeah, and 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 I think they 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 they're also betting on the fact that you know they know that this is a, this isn't going to be a plan that's going to appeal to the mainstream, but. They they come out looking good just based on the fact that they're offering this up, right? That they're giving mm-hmm. consumers this choice. And there are a lot of people that do want to. I mean, this is one of the things that that the the the, the I guess we'll call it the old subsidy model um, was predicated on. Remember up, those days, know, Peter. Uh, uh, was predicated on uh, people upgrading a phone every two years. But yeah. if hot new phones come out every year or every six months or whatever the frequency is going to be, um, you don't want to use a phone that's two years old. I mean, a lot of people don't. Um, and I, I think there are plenty of people who are fine using and uh, who don't care. But I think there are a growing number of people who do want to have, um, you know, something that's great. And, uh, and the market for- sort of six, you know, I think the market is segmenting yeah. um, in ways that, uh, in ways. I just don't know how big that number is. The people yeah. who really care, it might not be that big. I was going to say that kind of flies in the face of something you said earlier, which is that people are not as interested. Well, in I think in a macro scale, I yeah. think that um, that it, when you think about, I mean, I think we have to differentiate between. Um, the overall size of the market and how fast the market is growing, and I think that as the um, the market is the smart the market for smartphones has gotten so big, and so many people have phones that um, you know that 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 you know it's not just about first time buyers. Sure. And also, I think smartphones have gotten good enough that for a lot of people, they don't feel like they're missing out by not getting the latest thing. Sure. And, and, but and, I think there are always going to be people yeah. who do want the latest thing. And, and and honestly, when it comes down to it, those evolutions are so iterative in, in a lot of cases that like, you know, owning owning the GS3 versus owning the GS4 is not, is not you know, night and day. Yeah, it's not as big of a, I mean, it's just not that big of a, a, of a jump as it might have been before. And I think also, you know, we also don't have... Um, one of those inflection points where, um, you know, going from say a two G phone to a three G phone or a three G phone to a four G phone or whatever, like something like that is a, a big deal and a big reason for people to upgrade. But there's no, um, if you bought a, a four G phone last year, an LTE phone last year, you, you know, you're not getting a fast, necessarily a much faster phone yeah. um, by buying something this year. Uh, let's, uh, let's actually move on to the, uh, the HTC one mini. So, you know, no, no huge shocker that this was coming. I mean, they didn't do a very good job keeping it arrived. I don't think they even tried. No, they didn't. And they were, they were leaking it themselves at one point. When it was announced, I went, wait, didn't we, wasn't this announced already? This is, this is a new thing. There were like four or five teasers about the thing. And I think probably a lot of that has to do with the fact that this isn't an entirely new phone. So they're trying to create some excitement around it. Well, and I think Elsa recognizes that like it's I mean, it's fine. You don't have to keep, it's like keeping it a secret or not keeping a secret is not necessarily going to make much of a difference. Um, yeah, well, when you're, HT, when you're HTC, you're doing whatever you can to get excitement around these products as, as much as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they, they have not, they have not built the infrastructure of an Apple or even like a Samsung or even a Nokia really when it comes right down to it in terms of getting people excited around the announcement of a product. Yeah. 
Um, so again, like spec wise, in a lot of ways, you know, or at least from a from a aesthetic standpoint, is is quite similar to uh, the HTC One, which is, by all accounts, a very good phone. Um, as the name suggests, it's uh, it's a bit smaller. It's a four point three inch device, has a seven twenty p res, so um, little um, little little lower res from from. From that standpoint, but we'll, it's, it's we'll, all the screens that were left over from the yeah. unsold HTC yeah. first. It's literally the same screen. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it probably is, but it probably no. is in a lot of cases. <laughs> um, it's going to be cheaper. Uh, is you know, is is this is there a reason for this phone to exist? Uh, well, I, I think so. I think that um, it, it, that. I mean, this isn't the first time that that they've segmented the market in this sure. way. I mean, they had the the what, last year the One X and the One S. One, there were three the, of them, right? There was, and a, there was the One V, but, yeah. and which was even lower yeah. end, and I don't think it was was the One V. I think it was a Virgin Mobile carried it. I um, think so, yeah. but otherwise it was mostly a European thing. Yeah, yeah the different the yeah. difference being though they they kind of all they they announced it was kind of all at the same time, which yeah. was that, just utter chaos. That is true. <laughs> um, and so, I, I mean, I think that it, it makes sense. I think not everybody wants a larger phone. I think that it's a, uh, if they can get, I think they haven't announced pricing, um, as yeah. far as I know. Maybe it's going to be cheaper. We know It's going to be cheaper, but we don't know how much cheaper. Yeah. Um, but I think that it, it's, it's, uh, it, it seems like the market for these, for high end phones is kind of, you're getting like around four, four and a third inches, 4.3 inches. You're getting mm-hmm. 4.7 or five inch screens. And then you're getting into the, like the phablet. Yeah, territory and, and 4.3 is probably sufficient for most people. Sure, uh, I it's think a good it, size. Yeah. yeah, I think what'll be interesting is is whether um, and I guess there's rumors about a one a HC one Max, which um, was supposed to have like what was it like a six like a six inch six inch. Screen. That rumor just came out of people just <laughs> figuring that if there's got to be a mini, there's got to be a maxi. Um, and I, and I think that that's probably the the the. Like I said, recognition that that's how the market is sort of splitting up right now, and and um, yeah. that might change. But um, I, I I think it makes sense for them to do a smaller phone. Cool. Yeah. All right. Sure. No I, problem I, with that. I just hope the mm. battery life is good. Yeah. Uh, man. I, well, we could we could actually we could talk about AT and T buying buying Leap real quick. Um, I don't I don't know how many um, how how, how uh, what my opinions of that are beyond the fact that I, I'm kind of generally opposed to too much consolidation yeah i mean that's, from the carrier standpoint i think that's kind of the beginning and the end of the conversation for yeah. me too it's like uh, it's one one point one nine billion um you know leap of course um uh uh best known for uh uh why is this name totally escaping me right cricket. now cricket thank yeah. you so much <laughs> yeah which you know it's that's a it's still a pretty pretty big uh pay-as-you-go carrier out there right i mean cricket's prepaid yeah yeah um, yeah. yeah, and I think a lot of people. I mean, it has a decent customer base. I feel like this was a bought for Spectrum more than anything else. Yeah, for sure. This was like um, a metro a metro buy for them. Yeah, well, it's. I mean, this is one of the the the, the issues around um, uh, for you know for Verizon and and, and AT and T is that they are really greedy for Spectrum now. They need a lot of Spectrum if they're going to keep growing. Yeah, and they got to find you know they got to find that from somewhere. Um, and I think again, if you're Sprint or I mean, we've seen this, you know, Sprint and T-Mobile sort of scrambling as well. I mean, Sprint, you know, doing this clear wire transaction so sure. that they can get more spectrum. AT, you know, T-Mobile um, wisely being able to get some spectrum out of the breakup fee from the uh, failed acquisition by AT and T. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, these guys got to all figure this out. And I think it's actually harder for if you're a smaller carrier, um, you know, to find that path forward because you do to compete, you do. You know, and you're, if you're not an MVNO, you have to be able to yeah. get you know sufficient amount of spectrum to be able to build on a network. Yeah, and 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 T-Mobile has you know has no misgivings talking about the fact that they did in fact really for in a lot of ways buy it. I mean, a for you know the, the the prepaid market is still you know pretty pretty sizable one at this point, so it makes sense to kind of get get in there. But really, I mean, yeah, that the big buy ultimately ultimately was for spectrum. I mean, they're going to be rolling Metro PCS into T-Mobile probably. You know, I'm guessing within like a year. Maybe two. Yeah, I mean, and, and it, I guess maybe they will. I guess they could roll it into their. Um, I mean, I, I guess uh, AT and T could roll this into their existing yeah prepaid service or something like that. They I, probably I, will. Yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, uh, cricket customers will probably be AT and T customers. What is that? Go, go phone. Yeah, in the not too distant future, AT and T go phone. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that's. I, I think we hit about everything from news. It did um, want to pay some. Uh, Make, make mention of the elephant in the room or the elephant not in the room sure of course uh, uh tim is no longer with us 
he's not dead. Uh, no, and I, I, I uh, you know. it's always weird. It's always weird. It's always weird trying to, 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 to talk about people when they're not dead after they leave a job. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I always really, and I told him this, I always really enjoyed being on the podcast. It's yeah. definitely a highlight of my week. Um, and, uh, I'm sure, you know, that everybody that listens to the podcast misses, I mean, you can't, you've got to miss the voice. <laughs> you know? Um, uh, the ladies certainly do. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I'm going to miss him. And I think, you know, it's a, it's a loss for us, of course. Yep. Um, he was very much beloved by the staff and everybody. It's, it's a loss for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, uh, Terrence, you and I came on to Engadget roughly the same time. Yep. You know, uh, spring of 2011, which was a, a very, <laughs> pretty tough time for the site for any of never reasons. And, you know, I, 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 I don't think that there's any question that, that, you know, as of, as of right now, we're in a much better, better place than we were in, oh, in, for in sure. a number of respects. Um, you know, in terms of just having sort of a, a larger, you know, more, more cohesive staff, um, in terms of coverage, uh, and the, the properties that were built out while he was here. I mean, you know, distro is, won any number of awards and everybody's really excited to uh, to download that yep. at the end of every week so he helped lead the charge on that um expand was a, a huge success and getting bigger and yep. the expanding. show is you know light years beyond where it was yep. i think we, we totally we totally revamped the show as well um a lot more a lot more features on the site yep. um gonna be a lot fewer uh a few dog pictures I stuck know. into uh, to various Apple reviews. You're gonna you're gonna to have to make up for it with a lot more bunny. There photos. are gonna be a lot more. I, I don't know if I've I don't know if I've made that clear on any of the calls that we've had, but that is gonna be my mandate. There are gonna be a lot more, a lot more rabbit pictures on the site <laughs> moving ahead. So, at least one at all times in the top five. I assume. you know what if if you feel the need to move on to a different site because you're not a fan of rabbits, I I'm not gonna be it sad to like see rabbits. you go. If you don't like rabbits, They're, get out. Get yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you don't like rabbits, you are you are you are no friend of Engadget. No. Um, so so Tim uh, Tim obviously will 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 be missed on this podcast and and outside. Um, you know, I wouldn't 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 be surprised if um, I don't know if he made an appearance on the show in the in in the in the not too distant future. And you know, obviously, um, you'll probably be hearing from him in some respect uh, again. Pretty, oh, pretty I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, woo. Fun way to fun way to go oh, out. No. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for joining us, uh, Peter Peter Rojas on Twitter, Terrence Terrence O'Brien on Twitter. No Lots A's, of man. E's. No, Lots of no E's a. and no A's. I'm B Heater. No Ryan on mine. Uh, <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll uh, we'll catch you guys again next week. Thanks.